Brasil. This is the free new program we call You Are the Jury, offering you the chance to actually take part in a radio show without leaving your own living room. Now, who in our radio audience will be named jurors tonight? Which 12 of you will win attractive prizes from your Gruen dealer who sponsors this program? How can you get on the jury? Listen for full details in just a moment. In the meantime, you should make it a point every few days to stop in at Everett's Jewelry Company. If you don't, you simply cannot know what delightful gifts are available these days. So the next time you're near Everett, step in and ask to see Everett's complete line of Gruen watches. See for yourself how these world-famous timepieces combine modern, streamlined beauty with dependable accuracy. You'll understand why Gruen is the proudest name in time. And remember, for gifts at their best, Call on Everett. And now Everett presents You Are the Jury. Four years ago, on a cold winter morning, Claire Bradley and Roland West stood before the altar in St. Vincent's Church. And you, Roland West, may take this man, Claire Bradley, to be your lawful wedded wife. You have them to hold these sickness and to help. For which show for poor, for better or for worse, and to be brought to you, part, I... Oh, 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 must you stay here and keep on pounding questions into me like this? Can't you see I'm almost crazy with grief? The man I was to marry was murdered at the altar only yesterday, in front of my very eyes. Haven't I suffered enough? I'm sorry, Miss Bradley, but the fact that it is murder makes it necessary for me to ask uh, you a few questions. All right. What do you want to know? Was there another man, Miss Bradley? Another? Can you ask a question like that? Miss Bradley, who is Gilbert? Gilbert? <laughs> Oh, Gilbert's an old, old friend. He was Roland's friend. How did you know about Gilbert? He sent you these flowers this morning. He left a card on them. Was Gilbert at the wedding? No. Mm. Oh, I invited him, but he had to leave town. What did Gilbert mean by this note on the card? These flowers suit me so much better, my dear. What did he mean by that? I don't know. And I can't see how that's any business of yours. Maybe it isn't my business right at the moment, Miss Bradley. But after I pay a visit to this forest, it is quite possible that it will be. Before entering the courtroom to hear the trial of the People versus Gilbert Wallace, Everett's Jewelry Company of Dallas, Texas, wishes to invite you, your family and friends, to register at their store for jewelry duty. Here's all you have to do. Go to Everett's Jewelry Store in Dallas, Texas, with your name, address, and telephone number. Each week, Everett will select 12 people who will be hired for jury duty. All you have to do is sit at home, listen to the program, You Are the Jury, and then return your verdict to the store any time within the following week. This blank will be mailed to you by Everett in plenty of time for the program, and when you return it to the store, they will present you with an attractive gift in appreciation for your services to this program. Tonight's jurors are as follows. Mrs. George Dunham, Mr. Anthony Dawson, Mr. Lee Strand, Mr. Norman Sloan, Mr. Henry Blake, Mrs. Arthur Mann, Mr. Herman Foster, Ms. Ruth Norton, Mrs. John C. Weston, Mr. Charles Catchings, Mrs. Jack Cannon, Mr. Vincent Carney. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in just a moment the trial will begin. Your verdict will be announced on this program next week, so be sure to bring your ballot to Everett within the coming week. Now to the crowded courtroom where the trial of the people versus Gilbert Wallace is already underway. Seemingly bewildered, Wallace still insists that his alibi is airtight and pleads not guilty to the charge placed against him, the murder of Roland West. As the scene opens, prosecuting attorney Lloyd is just completing his initial address to the jury. And the people will show you that Gilbert Wallace, long attested friend of both Claire Bradley and Roland West, fiendishly contrived an ingenious plan to murder his best friend, and on that fateful morning, committed the act under the sacred roof of the church. His only hope of freedom is to prove to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that he was not present at that fatal wedding. 
And I stand here before you to say the state will definitely prove beyond any reasonable doubt that Gilbert Wallace was present at that wedding. State will call its first witness. Call Miss Claire Bradley to stand, please. Claire Bradley to stand. Claire Bradley. You tell Miss Claire to tell the truth to her truth and I can get the truth to her truth. I do. Thank you. Now, Miss Bradley, tell me, how long have you known Gilbert Walsh? About 15 years. We met in high school. How long did you know Roland West, the man you would have met? About the same length of time. We see you in the same town. We became friends. And you mean so until... I understand. Now, Mr. Evans, please tell the court, did Gilbert Wallace ever express any love or personal affection for you? Many times. Mm-hmm. He wanted to marry you, didn't he? Objection. That's a leading question. Objection sustained. I'll reword the question, Mr. Evans. Did Gilbert Wallace ever propose to you? Yes, he did. Did you love him? I did. But, but, but not on that day. I see. Now, Miss Bradley, tell the court in your own words just what happened to your home on the night of February 1st, three days before your wedding. I was at home, making last minute arrangements for, for my marriage. And Gilbert called. He'd laughed and chatted away. And suddenly he became very strange. And he said to me, Claire, why don't you stop kidding yourself for me and Roland? Oh, 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 what do you mean? You know what I mean. Claire, I love you. You can't marry Roland. You've got to tell him tonight. It isn't too late. Oh, but have you lost your mind? Of course I love you. Please don't. You're letting him talk you into something, and you know it. Oh, please, Claire. Oh, Claire, darling. Please, please. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, oh, Roland. Well, what are you doing? Follow me around like a hound? Go ahead. Say it. Ask me what I was doing. Well, I'll tell you. I was kissing Claire. You're not going to marry her. Do you hear me? You're not going to marry her. Get out. Get out! And that was the last I saw of Gilbert. He called and apologized and told me he couldn't come to the wedding on account of business. Is that all he said? No. Last night he told me that that I I would not marry Rome. That is all, Cross examine. Thomas Bradley. Did you recognize Gilbert Wallace any place you might see him? Why, of course. Did you see him on the morning of your wedding? In the church, I mean? No. Did you uh, look for him? Yes. Yes, I did. I thought he would be there, even though he told me he wouldn't. Thank you. That's all, Miss Bradley. Okay, let me help you, Miss Bradley. The next witness for the state. Your Honor, because of the highly nervous condition of Miss Bradley, I respectfully request the court call a brief recess. As the attorney for the defense, any objections? No objections, Your Honor. Court is adjourned for a brief recess. And now for the trial of the people versus Gilbert Wallace. Court has convened, and the defense is now presenting its case to the jury. In his opening remarks, the attorney for the defense stated that he would prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that Gilbert Wallace is not and was not present at the fatal wedding. Several character witnesses have testified, and as we return to the courtroom, Gilbert Wallace, the defendant, is being called to the stand. I now call the defendant himself to the stand, Mr. Gilbert Wallace. Gilbert Wallace is down. Gilbert Wallace. You tell me, sir, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to him. I do. Be seated. Now, Gilbert, you've heard the testimony of the ticket agent who testified that you boarded his train on the morning of that fatal wedding. Now, I want you to tell the court, in your own words, were you present at the wedding of Claire Bradley and Roland West on the morning of February 4th? I was not. When did you return to the city? That evening. It was only then that I learned of Roland's tragic death. Gilbert, did you love Claire Bradley? Of course I loved her. Is it a spend love a woman just because someone else loved her? Let me ask the question, please. Gilbert, did you ever threaten the life of Roland West? Of course not. Did you ever make the statement that Claire Bradley would never marry Roland West? I did. But I didn't dream that Roland would be murdered. They always said that, I suppose, to be dramatic. And you bore no malice toward Roland West? I bore no malice toward him. I admit I was jealous of him for winning Claire, but I was mad enough to accept my defeat. That's why I left town that morning and did not go to the wedding. Thank you, that's all. Cross examine, Mr. Lloyd. Why did you go to back bay? I don't know. Ever go to Back Bay before? No. And you didn't go there on February 4th, did you? Yes. Why? 
I don't know. I wanted to get away. Why did you send flowers to Claire Bradley? Because I wanted to. Is that a crime, too? What do you mean by writing these flowers? Teach you so much better, my dear. On the car to come to those flowers. Oh, I meant that because they were my flowers. I feel they were better than anything else in the world. I suppose it does sound a bit cryptic, but that's what I intended it to mean. Gilbert Wallace, do you know what you meant by that sentence? Why don't you admit you murdered Roland West? Admit that you were present at the wedding. I wasn't there, I tell you. And you can't prove I was. That's all. Well, next witness, Your Honor, the defense rests. <laughs> Has the state any testimony to offer in rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to call to the stand at this time, Mary Macklin. Mary Macklin, to the stand. Mary Macklin. Tell Miss Wells, tell the truth, I hope we can have a bit of a I do. Appreciate it. Now, Miss Macklin, what is your occupation? I own a flower shop. I'm a florist. Was well, Gilbert Wallace a customer of yours? Yes, sir. A very good customer. You sent flowers to Miss Bradley quite often? Oh, yes, quite often. Did he visit your store on February the 5th, the day after her wedding? Well, I... All right, answer my question. Remember you're under oath, Miss Macklin? Yes, he did. At what time? Half past nine in the morning. Did he order flowers? Yes, he ordered flowers from Miss Bradley. Now, tell the court just what happened to you. Well, Mr. Wallace came in and he seemed very excited. He said to me... Miss Macklin, send the most beautiful bunch of flowers you have in the case to Miss Bradley. Well, my yellow roses were wonderful that day, so I suggested them. But all of a sudden, he became almost white in the face and walked back at me saying, No, don't send her yellow roses. Those will remind her of her wedding bouquet. That's all. Cross-examined. No questions to this witness. Take the stand again, Wallace. All to the stand. Move it forward. All right, Wallace. Now, you heard that testimony, didn't you? Yes, I... I heard it. Was it the truth? Yes. It was the truth. Then answer this question. If you weren't present at the wedding of Claire Bradley and Roland West, then how did you know what kind of flowers she carried for a wedding bouquet? I... I can't answer that question. Is Gilbert Wallace guilty or not guilty? Why did he shrink from answering that question? Is there some other way he might have known about those flowers? You will hear the verdict on the next You Are the Jury program. When you are looking for gifts which will bring sparkling smiles to the eyes, when you are looking for gifts which will be prized for years to come, make a date with yourself to spend an hour or so at Everett's Jewelry Company. Gifts from Everett, you know, are gifts at their very best. And when you're in Everett, Ask for the whole story of curved wristwatches. You'll learn that some curved wristwatches are made with cases which are curved, but with movements which are flat. Naturally, to fit into a curved case, a flat movement must necessarily be fragile and small. Not so with the Gruen Curve X wristwatch. At Epic, they'll tell you that the Gruen Curve X is the one wristwatch which has a completely curved movement. In the Gruen Curve X, and exclusively in the Gruen Curve X, the movement, as well as the case, is curved, permitting larger, sturdier parts and a full-size, accurate movement. Ask anyone at Everett to show you the Gruen Curvex, the wristwatch which combines practical, streamlined beauty with pocket watch accuracy. And remember, in Dallas, gifts from Everett are gifts at their best.